that was um that felt good you know for me it was when i was really young you know i'd go out into the garden once it was dark you know at night i'd like creep out <laughs> <laughs> and i'd just like dance around like dance around the garden um I just love like the feeling of the sort of you know wet grass on my feet and just that sensation you know and, and i suppose yeah there was probably a slight element of like you know i'm not allowed to do this so therefore it's nice um, <laughs> but i think that kind of in a way like we like rediscovering it in a way like when i was um, in my 20s that was sort of um i don't know kind of more of a more of a sense of like i just wanted to be open truthful kind of like the possibility of like just being able to like discover a different side of yourself actually in a way um and i think that's something to do with just like you know the um like the experiential side like what actually happens um in your mind like you you relax <laughs> absolutely <laughs> that's a wonderful thing you know so what do you enjoy about being a naturist so I, I suppose i mentioned the sensation and you know a, a big part of it is the mental well-being um and you know that's that's just kind of to do with being seen i think like being seen as a human yes um, absolutely and and i suppose in a way like as, as an animal which we are <laughs> <laughs> um in you know in our sort of purest kind of sense um and and so like with like for me with that came a lot of self-acceptance as well um i don't sound very sure that i'm asking a question <laughs> acceptance <laughs> I suppose because for me it's it's about body confidence and I feel there's, people are all different shapes and sizes it doesn't really matter yeah yeah exactly exactly no I mean I, I feel like I've had like the most brilliant kind of kind of welcome really in in naturism you know there's a lot of um a lot of places you can go obviously you know whether it's clubs or <clears throat> or beaches or whatever yeah um, and yeah I've I've always felt you know that it's a it's a comfortable environment and yeah it's probably a cliche in a way but it just you know it feels it feels like a sort of leveling like it feels like um as i say everyone's seen i mean i'm sure i'm sure people have secrets still <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure they do um, have you had any crazy experiences being a naturist easy experience well if you mean like absurd um i suppose like in a way the the world naked bike ride um ought not to be an absurd experience it ought to be completely normal um but i suppose you know the the status of nudity in our culture kind of means it does kind of have an edge of absurdity to it so i did that like um with my friend like i don't know maybe 15 years ago was it even going then i'm not sure wow. um but it was it was brilliant because we did the london one and then we cycled clothes i may add to brighton um to get to the get to the one there sort of you know, the next day <laughs> which was which was a very um it's very interesting to compare the difference you know um but yeah i suppose i suppose another kind of absurd thing was um i was on uh, bbc's the voice wow uh, with, with my partner um my ex-partner my friend yes um <laughs> and uh we <clears throat> we are both life models we still are life models um so in a way that was like a way of getting the naturism kind of into our backstory um because we sort of wanted to um you know fly a little flag for naturism really yeah so obviously you know life modeling is kind of a it's kind of an easy progression to talk about naturism from that really and i suppose like for me they do kind of go hand to hand just because i feel very comfortable you know when i when i'm naked um, you perform in the in the nude I have done, yes, yeah. quite a lot actually. Yeah, so so basically, after we went on the Voice and Twitter went absolutely berserk, <laughs> we got so many bookings. You know, we had a, I mean, it took about two months to answer the emails. To be honest, it's like the power of TV. Um, but yeah, we we ended up doing like loads of um, festivals and and I suppose you know the naturist community noticed and. Um, yeah probably i don't know maybe 10 different clubs and events um we've we've done kind of yeah since since 2015 um and that's always wonderful and what i find really interesting actually is that sometimes the organizers will say oh we've heard like we've heard you play naked because 
apparently a lot of um, a lot of musicians, you know, naturist venues are not naturists. So in a way, it's like we, if we play naked, it means that we give um, other naturists, you know, the sort of carte blanche to to do the same, like to you know to take their clothes off and you know, yeah. often yeah that thing at clubs where you know it's time to eat or whatever, and suddenly everyone puts their clothes on. Um, so it's been really nice just to have like total kind of you know free dancing you know like freestyling in the in the proper sense of the absolutely word. <laughs> so you'd say you say naturism has changed your life in any way oh those questions <laughs> <laughs> changed my life i mean i suppose what i say about self-acceptance and relaxing and relaxing so i mean everything yeah, I suppose my slight difficulty with the question is like everything affects everything. So Difficult. in a way, I feel like I wouldn't be the person that I was if I you know, didn't have that sort of, um, I don't know, that that um, that need in a sense, you know, to just be, be free and, you know, kind of just relax, express myself or whatever. And obviously, you know, people will do that in various ways and... You know, I think it's important we don't sort of say, you know, this is this is the way and the truth and the life or whatever, you know, it's like... <laughs> no, well, not be evangelistic. <laughs> exactly, like this is one answer to, you know, how we can, um, like how we can, like, you know, very, very literally throw off, you know, throw off um, a lot of our conditioning and, and kind of... Um, you know, like the, the perils of modernity, you know, it's kind of good to be able to um, say, well, actually, you know, maybe there's, maybe there's something else that we can, we can tap into. So it, do, it does always feel like very, very welcoming and, and free and relaxing and all of those things. Yeah. I, I think, you know, I think it's good not to like build too, too strong a sort of ideology around it because it just feels, <laughs> <laughs> it just feels great. It's true. Um, so have you told any of your friends or family and how have they reacted? Well, I suppose the TV thing for anyone who didn't mm -hmm. know, it was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, to be honest, if, if anyone has any kind of negative reaction about it, I haven't, I haven't actually heard that like from the horse's mouth or anything. Um, I mean, I suppose like, yeah, I've had like one-on-one -on -one conversations um, with, you know, with people where I've just talked about it. But I, to be honest, like, I think, because you know because it's because i feel because i feel so like unashamed about it it's kind of it's kind of like i'm not going to i'm not going to not tell certain people so it'll just come up casually just come up really casually and you probably want me to say like some you know lovely evangelist story where i you know invited someone to an event and they became themselves but i can't really i can't really think of one of those examples no, <laughs> there that might be that's absolutely fine that's great <laughs> 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 So would you recommend British naturism to people who are looking to socialise and get to know people? I think it's I think it's a really good a good way in to have, you know, like proper events, really. Yeah. And it's and it's good to have I mean, the most important thing really is community, is like being able to, you know, speak to other people and obviously, you know, I almost say like in the old days, but you know, before the <laughs> pandemic. Be, like being able to go to a, a sort of social function, um, you know, where there are 200 people or whatever, like that is that is actually brilliant. And it probably sounds really unnerving to somebody who's never been to something like that. And to be honest, like I'm, I don't feel like, even though I'm a musician, I'm a performer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I don't feel like I'm the kind of person who needs to socialise with a lot of people. Um, so like it's got it's got a different dynamic a different kind of edge to it um because i'm not like i'm not really a clubby kind of person you know i don't i don't feel like i need to belong to an organization of lots and lots of people but i suppose the the benefit really is just being able to provide um you know support so like the legal thing is a, is a huge side of that yeah. and obviously you know we do need ab ab advocacy and those kinds of things um and yeah like really it's just sort of being able to have um i think it's good to have an official face um <clears throat> just in just in terms of like you know obviously a lot of the um kinds of you know knee-jerk responses that that you know kind of 
less familiar people might have. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, the end is brilliant. <laughs> it is, it is. So tell me about your music. Um, what kind of music oh, do you play? What kind of music? Well, <laughs> so yeah, it's very, very varied. It's very, very varied. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like genre blind in many ways. Like it's all music. Um, and I suppose I always like being led and gravitated towards like jazz and folk and prog, like prog progressive rock yeah. and um, and classical as well, you know, like an electronic. So in a way, I suppose I make music that I would like to listen to. And my latest album has got a combination of all of those things. Um, so kind of carrying on from the voice story, we, um, we went <clears throat> on a pilgrimage from, as you do, from Devon to Westminster. Um, and that was in the 2015 general election, so quite a while ago. And because the song we'd done on TV was Snaps the Power, we asked people along the way, as we were busking, um, we asked them all about power. So we went to seven different train stops every day. And when we got to London on the seventh day, <clears throat> we got a milk float and we went to Parliament Square and we sort of symbolically delivered the power of all the people that we'd met along the way, hopefully a few more, uh, at the steps of Parliament. Now, I'm sure you wouldn't be allowed to do that nowadays. And so to show you how much has changed like in six years, our album is all about that experience. So it's got as many genres and sounds as the opinions and people that we met along the way. So um, it's called The Other Place. And um, I don't know if you can put a link in the... Um, oh, I will do, yeah, yeah. In the description, that would be lovely. <laughs> Absolutely. It sounds really good. So you, do you write all your own music or do you just or do you do covers as well? Um, so I suppose Martine and I um, on the Nature Circuit, you know, we became known for doing covers because obviously, you know, that's that's great for a night out. And, um, and, I, and, you know, I've always loved that and always appreciated that. And I've always loved disco and soul and pop and like, you know, loads of things. And it's, and it's brilliant to do that kind of music, like especially in a sort of stripped down, no pun intended, um, <laughs> form, you know, like guitar and violin and singing and stamping feet, you know, like yeah. that's, to, to me, I can tell if a night's going to be good because I walk in and go, is the place with a floorboard I can stamp? Yes, there is, brilliant, we're off, you know. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I, I suppose like in terms of my own sort of, uh, you know, Billy Bottle and the Multiple, which is my band, that's always, you know, um, my music, our music. Um, so yeah, it's 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 kind of like having the two hats, really. It's like, you know, we do our do our fun party stuff and then on the other side, um, you know, we do our kind of bit more arty stuff, but hopefully is entertaining and a little bit weird as well. Yeah, it sounds absolutely fascinating and <laughs> brilliant. Do you, have, do you have music available to download or...? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So The Other Place has just come out. Mm -hmm. um, it's on our Bandcamp, billybottle.bandcamp.com. Um, and so, yeah, last week we started pre-orders. Um, it's going to be out probably on May the 14th. Um, you can also buy our previous album, Unrecorded Bean, which is very much a, um, a naturalist album. You know, maybe it could be a naturist album. In fact, I had a lovely tweet the other day from somebody saying, oh, I've just had the most wonderful experience. And, you know, this, well, actually, it was like a month ago. So it was kind of like, you know, first few little signs of sun or whatever and a little bit of warmth. <laughs> and they, they um, tweeted, oh, I've just been listening to Billy Bottle's unrecorded being naked on a lawn. And it was such an experience. So that was, I mean, to me, that's like, that's, that's you know, gold tweet. <laughs> so it, it ties the two things together, which is great. <laughs> there, we go, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say it was irrelevant. But every place needs a government. At the end of the day, places will stand. People will be happy. There will be nourishment. It's my choice to do what I'm doing. Don't get involved Every day working at the food bank Without small cocks The bigger ones Ain't gonna work And it feels like they haven't got a clue What it's like to live low it's like to ever be low, you know. Yeah, it feels like they haven't got a clue what it's like to live low, what it's like to ever be low. 
Small car.